your your take on what has been unveiled here? Yeah, so we've been going through interviews. I sit on the Weaponization Committee, and we've been interviewing these individuals, some, some of which we've been deposing because they wouldn't come in voluntarily. And we now have testimony, evidence, that the Biden campaign used the CIA to get people to sign on to this letter because they wanted to try to, sub try to subvert from the facts of what was going on on Hunter Biden's laptop. And the Biden campaign thought if we had a number of different intelligence community people sign on to a letter that this is classic Russian disinformation, that Biden could use that in the debate. And that's exactly what happened. You have a scenario where the active government, the CIA, was working for the Biden campaign at the time to try to subvert what was factually actually happening. To your justice system, that's exactly what's happened. Listen, I've read the Durham report. I've read this uh, FBI 1023 form about Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. And now you see in this documents case, I've had a chance to look at this indictment. And it is crystal clear to me that if you're a Republican who basically stands tough against the radical left agenda, they're going to do everything they can to take you out. That's really what this is about. Hillary Clinton destroyed uh, emails that were subpoenaed by Congress. She destroyed them. They, and then the only reason why people found out that she had classified emails is because they showed up on the computer of Anthony Weiner when he was being investigated for child pornography. And that's how they found her emails. Joe Biden took uh, classified documents when he was a United States senator, when he was a vice president, they were found in his garage, found at his office, all these places that they should not have been. Donald Trump is a former president of the United States. The former presidents take information with them. They have an ability to declassify, which nobody else has. And they are the executive branch when they are commander in chief. If you're now going to prosecute a former president over something like this, where is the indictment on Hillary Clinton? Where is the special counsel on Joe Biden? Because that special yeah. counsel seems to be taking his time while Jack Smith has gone as a man berserk. Well, well Indicting Donald Trump at a moment when we know more and more and more about just how corrupt the Bidens are uh, and, how, and the Biden team is, uh, is simply going to increase the anger of the millions of Americans who already believe that the Durham report's right, that the FBI was corrupted, that the intelligence community was corrupted, that the current attorney general is corrupt, certainly that the current secretary of state uh, who is getting a lot of money from the University of Pennsylvania, probably from the Chinese, but we don't know because it's all secret. Uh, I mean, all this is going to do is just strengthen the notion that uh, to be against by, to be against Donald Trump in the Republican primary is to help the left. This story has been overshadowed by the Trump indictment, but Representative James Comer says there may be more than just one FBI document pointing to Joe Biden taking bribes. During an interview Sunday, Comer criticized the FBI, saying oversight Republicans were granted access to the document alleging Biden took bribes as vice president only after Republicans said they would hold the FBI director in contempt. Comer claims the allegations related to that document, the FD-1023, may exist beyond a single form, and there's a lack of curiosity among the media. Comer claims the Biden family apparently established more than 20 shell companies to launder money from foreign nationals. He states the money was distributed among nine different family members. Biden has notably laughed off these allegations about him taking a multi-million dollar bribe from a Ukrainian energy company, Burisma when he was VP, calling it a bunch of malarkey and asking, where's the money? Stole those documents. You want to see just how clean the Biden family is, how uncorrupt they are? How about this text message to Henry Zhao, who is a Chinese Communist Party official? This is Hunter Biden texting a CCP official. I'm sitting here with my father, and we would like to understand why the commitment made has not been fulfilled. Tell the director that I would like to resolve this now before it gets out of hand, and now means tonight. And Z, if I get a call or text from anyone involved in this other than you, Zhang, or the chairman, I will make certain that between the man sitting next to me, Joe Biden, and every person he knows, and my ability to forever hold a grudge, that you will regret not following my direction. I am sitting here waiting for the call with my 
father. That is a text message from the IRS agents that investigated Hunter Biden for five years. And this story is nowhere else to be found. Nobody will There was a Harvard-Harris poll this month that found that 53% of the public, including a fourth of Democrats, believe, quote, Joe Biden was involved with his son in an, in an illegal influence peddling scheme. Uh, there's, of course, evidence that the president interacted with his relatives, associates from China, uh, Mexico, Kazakhstan, Russia, and Ukraine. Uh, so what do you say to the majority of Americans who believe that the president is himself corrupt? President, the president, the president has spoken to this. Uh, the president has spoken to this, uh, and there's nothing to these claims. Joe Biden is the most corrupt president in the history of our country by far. Just two days ago, a very respected IRS whistleblower revealed that Crooked Joe sat in a room while his son Hunter messaged a Chinese Communist Party official and said to this. Chinese party official, I quote, I am sitting here with my father and we would like to understand why the commitment made has not been fulfilled. This is cash he's talking about. Yeah. Tell the director that I would like to resolve this now before it gets out of hand. And now means right now, it means tonight. You believe this? I didn't know he was that tough. <laughs> and if I get a call or a text from anyone involved in this other than you, Zhang or the chairman, I will make certain that between the man sitting next to me, my father, right next to me, Pop, hi Pop, <laughs> and every person he knows, you will regret not following my direction. Within 10 days, the Bidens got $5.1 million from China for absolutely no reason. They got $5.1 million. And that's probably why maybe he's not complaining about the fact that they're building military bases in Cuba. Maybe that's the reason, I guess. Mike, what do you think? I was just thinking, uh, uh, the, anyway, I started off without you. And I sold a lot of state secrets and a lot of very important things that we shared. Let me get this straight. The FBI was withholding from congressional oversight a document showing that during the Obama administration, Biden accepted a $10 million bribe through his son Hunter to force the firing of a Ukrainian prosecutor that was investigating corruption, an event that Donald Trump looked into, sparking the first impeachment and forcing the arming of Ukraine, in turn setting the stage for the current war against Russia. Evidence of the bribe was also in Hunter Biden's laptop, which the FBI also had, but that they swore was Russian disinformation and infiltrated social media to censor during the 2020 campaign. Campaign, all while the FBI investigates Trump for having classified documents, despite the FBI admittedly letting Hillary Clinton off for a similar charge in 2016, when they were simultaneously launching the Russiagate investigation into Donald Trump using falsified evidence provided by the Clinton campaign. Do I have that all straight? So let's look at some of the leaders throughout history who have had their political opponents arrested. There was Mussolini. Let's not forget Joseph Stalin. Of course, he had Dr. Evil himself, Adolf Hitler. Who can forget Mao Zedong? And of course, we have the most corrupt U.S. president in history, Joe Biden. Yes, there were many more of these so-called leaders who went against the will of the people, but these are the most infamous ones. Oh, and if you're a fact checker, yes, it's Biden's DOJ that's going after Trump. But we all know what's really going on, don't we? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Mr. Vice President, how many times have you ever spoken to your son about his overseas business dealings? I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. And so how do you let's, know? Let's how do you know? Here's what I know. I know Trump deserves to be investigated. He is violating every basic norm of a president. You should be asking him the question, why is he on the phone with a foreign leader trying to intimidate a foreign leader? Meanwhile, I am sitting here with my father. We would like to understand why the commitment made has not been fulfilled. Hunter Biden allegedly texted according to the transcript. I would like to resolve this now before it gets out of hand. And now means tonight. I'm sitting here waiting for the call, he said, with my father. I'm sitting here with my father waiting for the call. In other words, send us money. 
Within 10 days, the Bidens got $5.1 million from China for absolutely no reason. They got $5.1 million. I don't want to give you information you about this program because okay. I'm afraid that you'll use it against me as not okay. being enough. I can't keep talking. We're going to go round and round. I'm not circles. arguing, Ali. I'm asking you. Okay. I don't know. I, I, I think we should schedule a visit and we'll talk with a the therapist. I'm not going to continue to argue and I don't want to talk and, and, and make things worse. He is the smartest man I know. Of course not. And anybody in America can see that. You know, this is, of course, the the two tiered system of justice that we have, where if you are in the in crowd or you are in the, you know, part of the power elite in Washington, uh, you will be let off the hook for crimes that people are serving time in prison for today. If you're an everyday American. Trump or Biden, when it comes to document scandals, who do you believe more? Let's ask Jen Psaki, former press secretary for Joe Biden. There's one president who values uh, our national security and protects document or protects mm -hmm. uh, our secrets. And there's another former president candidate who doesn't. And now let me help you out. Here's a little context. A president can declassify anything. Joe Biden's got 1,800 boxes, not a couple of papers lying around the garage. 1,800 boxes that he had no right to have because he wasn't president when those boxes were taken away. And they're finding them all over the place. Trump, former president, had the right to declassify everything, had a private skiff at his house where the, where the documents were, and Secret Service 24-7 guarding him, his family, and his stuff. Now tell me, who is in bigger trouble here, Biden or Trump? Come on! One of the Democratic candidates is Senator Joseph Biden. Have you seen the problem he's been having? He went around and made a speech, and apparently he quoted a, I think it was a British politician, took his speech and kind of paraphrased it as his own. And then the press got on him, and then he was charged also with taking part of Bobby Kennedy's speeches. And Biden says, not to worry, he reassured his staff, he said, we have nothing to fear, but fear itself. <laughs> May I ask you a question, Joe? Yeah. You're right here with me. Yeah. Have you been on the floor of the Senate? You were in the Senate for a few years. Yeah. Time and time again, talking about the necessity, with pride, about cutting Social Security, cutting Medicare, cutting veterans programs. No. You never said that? No. When I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. I meant Medicare and Medicaid. I meant veterans. I meant every single solitary thing. When Joe Biden won, I figured like, okay, you know, either the voters were very well misinformed or uh, this whole thing was rigged. The, the reason why I even say this, because for one, you voted for an 80 year old man. If you saw him before he even became president, you would have realized this man was completely incoherent. I mean, I wouldn't even allow him to run my small business, let alone run the whole country. So the thing about it is the Democrats don't really win votes by, you know, policies alone. They win by uh, pandering and lying to minority groups saying, we're going to do this for you. We're going to get you this for free. We're going to do this for you. And they never do it. It's always something else. And, and I keep telling my black people, stop getting duped by them. They put every other minority before you. And you still 100 percent with the Democrat Party. They even put trans before you. Somebody that literally wants to be a girl. They put that before black people. They put all these new immigrants before black people. So I'm trying to figure out what benefit are you really getting, especially if the country's not doing well. I think everybody has to open up their minds right now and start stop thinking that they have to choose like a side or a team and understand and say, hey, what's best for the country? That doesn't mean one side is the all be all. But in the same token, you got to understand, OK, if you want to choose the lesser evil, OK, if the part one party is choosing transitioning children and teaching homosexuality to children, 
Then which party is more evil? And I have to confess, I knew nothing about their suffering until 2021 when I volunteered to help the Biden administration with the crisis at the southern border. As part of Operation Artemis, I was deployed to the Pomona Fairplex Emergency Intake Site in California to help HHS, Office of Refugee Resettlement, reunite children with sponsors in the United States. I thought I was going to help place children in loving homes. Instead, I discovered that children are being trafficked through a sophisticated network that begins with recruiting in home country, smuggling to the U.S. border, and ends when ORR delivers a child to a sponsor. Some sponsors are criminals and traffickers and members of transnational criminal organizations. Some sponsors view children as commodities and assets to be used for earning income. This is why we are witnessing an explosion of labor trafficking. Now, whether it's intentional or not, it could be argued that the United States government has become the middleman in a large-scale, multi-billion dollar child trafficking operation that is run by bad actors seeking to profit off of the lives of children. As Truth be told, Joe Biden knew his student loan program was unconstitutional from day one. Even Nancy Pelosi herself, she said so in public statements. But he wanted to buy votes in the midterms with false promises and young people fell for it. Gen Z Biden, who promised them student loan forgiveness and they bought it hook, line, and sinker. All they got was more inflation and still have their student loans. The Supreme Court struck down Biden's student debt relief program, which would have canceled over 400 billion in student loans. This is a big win for the United States, but for the 43 million borrowers who would have benefited, they have lost. You see, the real issue here is not that the Supreme Court is taking away some privilege given to people, but rather the president, in this case, created a privilege that he was not authorized to create and made it the court's job to tell him that he couldn't create it in the first place. He gave them false hope. I understand that this would make people angry. 20 million people believe they would have no student debt very soon. But it isn't the Supreme Court's fault that they won't receive the money. So let's not play games and start blaming the Supreme Court for taking away money from tens of millions of Americans because that didn't happen. The President and Congress are to blame. They failed to act. I'm Armstrong Williams. I think I probably have a much higher IQ than you do, I suspect. I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my, in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. Back to law school, and in fact ended up in the top half of my class. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only need 123 credits, and I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours if you'd like, Frank. Biden now concedes he did not graduate in the top half of his law school class that he does not have three degrees from college, and that he was not named outstanding political science student in college. Newsweek says Biden actually went to school on a half scholarship, ended up near the bottom of his class, and won only one degree, not three. Joe Biden ranked 76th in a class of 85 at the University of Syracuse Law School.